we're going to work on a traffic flow problem because it'll be good preparation for your test. I like doing these network analysis problems, specifically the traffic problems, because I always feel like I'm stuck in traffic. So it makes me feel like I'm doing a problem that relates to my real life. Um, so the way you set this up is pretty straightforward. The idea is that everything that goes into one of these nodes or intersections has to come out. Nobody's falling in a manhole or or disappearing into another dimension. They've got if they go if they go into the net intersection, they've got to come out. So you use that basic idea to set up a system of equations. So the first thing you want to do is label these arbitrarily, but you're going to label them so that you can keep track of which intersections you've worked with, which nodes you've worked with, and which ones you haven't. So um, now we're going to use this diagram to figure out what sort of equations we can get. Well, if you look at the first node, so I'm working on this one right here, what goes into node 1 is um, 400 and x2. What comes out is x1. So let's just write that down as an equation. 400 plus x2 has to equal x1. Agreed. 2, similar argument will give you that x1 plus x3 has to equal what's coming out of node 2. Well, that's 600 plus x4. Notice I'm not too concerned about the order of things. I just want to make a true equation. Eventually, we'll tidy up those equations so they look more like what we've, we're used to working with. So node 3, we know that 300 goes in. And x2, x3, and x5 come out. And for node 4, we know that x4 plus x5 has to equal 100. All right, good. So let's make some space down here um, in order to write out part A. So I want to solve this as a system. And right now, it's not written in any form that's easy to solve as a system using matrices. So I'm just going to go ahead and write it that way in the, in the form that we're used to working with. So x1 minus x2 equals 400. I'm leaving room for the variables x3 through x5, right? The second node gives me x1 plus x3 minus x4. That has to equal 600. The third one gives me x2 plus x3 plus x5 has to equal 300. And the fourth one gives me x4 plus x5 equals 100. All right, good. Now let's turn that into a, an augmented matrix that we can work with. So let's use blue. And here's what the augmented matrix will work, would look like. You would have a 1, a negative 1, a 0, a 0, a 0. So that, that 1 is for the coefficient of x1. The negative 1 is for the coefficient of x2. And then I don't have in the first equation any um, x3, x4, x5, hence the zeros. You get the point. And we're going to augment it with the solution over here. Gives me 400. Well, that was kind of ugly. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make that nicer. All right. So. I don't think that's any nicer, but let's roll with it. Now, next, uh, I'm not going to explain how this next row comes about. You're smart enough to figure that out. And in a similar fashion, we get this as our third row based on our equation. And we finally have the final row based on the last equation. All right, so now we have a matrix we get to work with. And the most important part of this is doing the row reduction to get this in row reduced echelon form. Now, I'm not going to do that in every step here because um, I trust that you can do that based on your work in chapters 1.1 and 1.2. So I'm going to give you what I got after I row reduced it. So row reduced echelon form. You have to show me this on a test, of course. And let's go ahead and make this answer in, do we use green yet? We did. Um, 
let's do it in purple because we can, right? All right, so if you reduce this thing to row, reduced echelon form, I think it took me about four steps, I think. You'll end up getting, it may take more, uh, it may take fewer steps. <sighs> end up getting this. Okay, so this is my fully reduced matrix that's been augmented. And from this, we'll be able to go directly to a parametrized answer. And as I said, the hint is you're always going to get that. Boy, I seem to have messed up this row, but we're going to go with it. Um, here's what you get. All right. Uh, and you should be able to do that by hand. It's pretty easy. Now, let's figure out what we have based on this. Now, notice this guy right here, all these zeros. That means, of course, that I lost a variable, so at least I have one parameter to work with. Um, and uh, you'll be able to see right here that we get a little, we get some clues that I have two parameters to work with, three parameters. So let's go ahead and start from the bottom. What if I let x5, remember we went up to x5, equal t, what does that give me? Well, that gives me x4 based on this fourth row of the fully reduced matrix is going to equal a 100 minus t. So all I did was translate what's over here into back into an equation. So I moved the x5 to the right hand side, it became negative. x5 happens to be t, so I went and had substituted it in. Now let's talk about x3. Now I happen to know that this guy is going to be a free variable because, well, you, if you look at the second row, you can see that I have too many variables there. So I went ahead and chose x3 to be v. I've already used t, and if I use s, you can't tell the difference on the screen or on the chalkboard between s and 5. So I usually go t and then v. So this is my x3. That's how I know that that's going to be uh, a, a parameter because I've got this guy, that's that's my t. I've got this guy, which is x2. That's what I'm going to solve for in the next one. And so x2 has to be 300, in this case, minus x5 minus x3. Well, we know what those are. So minus v minus t. Wow, that's good. All right, now my x1 should come out pretty nicely because everybody else has been accounted for. And here I get 700, again, minus V minus T. Now, of course, if you parametrize a set of solutions, they might be different, so I'll have to check each one. Usually, though, I go for, well, usually I go for the for the last variable, numerically, in this case x5, and start to work my way back. Make that a parameter and then a free variable and then work my way back. I can't take it off unless I instruct you to do that on a test, but usually I do instruct you to do that, so watch for which variable I ask for you to start with. Um, all right, so I have the answer. Now I've got to so this is the answer for any V and T, right? That's kind of nice. Now, any question they throw at me, I should be able to answer. So we solved A. Good. Let's talk about B. Uh, find the traffic flow when X equals uh, X3 equals 0 and X5 equals 100. Oh my goodness, that's going to be easy because this is just going to be plug and roll, isn't it? So Because I have everything in terms of X3 and X5. Fantastic. So part B, easily done. If x3 equals 0 and x5 equals 100, what does that mean? Well, we can go from the bottom, right? Well, that's a crazy implies symbol, isn't it? We'll change that because it's a little bit wonky. 
All right, so if we start with x5, that's much better, sort of. If we start with x5 being 100, then we work our way back. What's x4? It's just 100 minus t, or x5. So sure enough, that's just 0. I almost wrote 100. Um, no, that would be 0. And OK. And then now we're going to work our way up. x3, we know from up here, x3 equals v. Well, x3 was given in part b as 0. OK. And now we're going to do x2. x2 is 300 minus v minus t. Well, 300 minus v, which is 0, is 0, minus t, which is 100, gives me 200. And so x1, finally, let's go up and check to see what x1 is, 700 minus v minus t. And it doesn't take too much to figure out that you're going to end up getting 600 with that. So here are my, my answers. It's a bit sloppy, but I hope you can read it. Now let's go red for part C. Part C, if you notice, says, hey, do the same thing. So we did B. Do the same thing when the traffic flow of X3 and X5 are both 100. Well, it's a good thing I have it all solved right here. So again, we'll work from the bottom up because I got my T's and V's pretty low. X5 equals 100. Boy, that's easy. X4, again, equals 0 x3 equals 100, that's given in part c. x2 equals, well, let's figure it out. x2 is 300 minus 100 minus 100. You guessed it, 100. x1, it's hardly even worth working out. That's going to be 700 minus 100 minus 100. See right here? That's 500. Last time I checked. All right, so that's my answer. b and c are a joke. The first part is something, because a lot of students can't set this up, and then a lot of students, unfortunately, ooh, a lot of students, unfortunately, cannot row reduce. Um, even if you can't get it down to uh, row reduce echelon form, then you really want to um, go as far as you can and start plugging in. Anyway, I hope uh, that helped you, and I'll make some more videos soon.